So good day everyone. I just want to uh, thank the organizers of this event, uh, to the faculty, to the administration of Paraliano University. Uh, good day to each and everyone and thank you for inviting me once again. Okay, so my topic for this about the Data Privacy Act of 2012, its compliance and implementation in online education of the data privacy in the academy. So by the way, I'm Marmelo Abante. No? Uh, in 2012, the Philippine uh, the Philippines passed Republic Act number 10173, or also known as the Data Privacy Act of 2012 or the DPA, so which aimed to protect the fundamental human rights to privacy for communication while ensuring free flow of information to promote on innovation and growth uh, in the inherent obligation to ensure that personal information in government and private sector information in communication system is secured and protected. So the Data Privacy Act was passed in compliance with the Philippine ASEAN Vision 2020 commitments and at the request of the Borg Goning business process outsourcing industry. So the legislation was modeled after the European Union's Data Pri uh, Protection Directives and many of each term and regulations are identical to those found in other countries' privacy law. Now, so who is that collects personal information? So data brokers, also known as information brokers, are the primary providers of personal data collections, transformation, packaging, and sales. So they collect... Uh, data from the following sources, no? documents and records from the government, such as registration information and criminal records. So who is the individual who collects the most personal information? So they evaluated data from 200 phone apps across 18 categories, ranging from chatting and shopping to food delivery and dating. Like uh, Facebook, which also controls Facebook Messenger and Instagram came out on the top for gathering the most data. Now, as you can see here, the amount of data collected in the internet in 60 seconds. Now, every minute, places all across the world no, collect data at rate that would astound anyone. So while one half of the world sleeps, the other is using social media, Skype meetings, and messaging to start their day. So data, in other words, never sleeps. So uh, if you're familiar with Domo, a cloud software company provides an annual report every year detailing how much data is collected in each minute. And the statistics have risen after uh, a rising year after year. So the world's online population is expanding dramatically year after year. So according to their analysis, as of January 2019, actually, no, in the internet covers 56.1% no, of the world's population, totaling 4.39 billion people up to 9% from January 2018. So in total, Americans utilize 4,416,720 gigabyte of internet data per minute, which includes 100 88,000 emails, 18,100 no, messages, and 4,497,420 4, Google searches. Take note of it. It's just only a minute or 60 seconds. <clears throat> so we use our phones for more than just making phone calls. No? Uh, Skype users make 231,840 calls per minute. And people send 511,200 tweets per minute, in addition to the million of texts and emails exchanged each minute. So with 390 downloads each minute, now, app downloads are on the rise. So there are now millions of apps available to perform almost anything you can imagine. So you may send humorous gifts to pals or post photos to Instagram. No? Uh, tender swipes at 1,400,000 per minute can help you discover a relationship or even just a date. 
no? We now have access to digital service such as streaming music and movies, paying your pals for drinks at the bar, ordering food in seconds, and even arranging a, ra a ride or a place to stay. So, 4,500,000 videos are seen on YouTube by users. And there are 1,389 reservations on Airbnb. Over passengers have taken 9,772 rides so far. And Vermo users have made 162,037 transactions. So with this rising numbers, it's not it's no surprise no, that the data is uh, on everyone's mind these days. And data breaches are so important. So these figures depict how individuals interact and engage with one another. And they are crucial to many businesses. No? marketing efforts. No? According to IDC, the total amount of digital data created globally will reach 163,000 zeta bytes by 2025, owing to the increasing number of devices and <coughs> sensors. Now, which is more valuable? Okay, would you uh, please type data or money in our chat box? Okay, so... Whether you're a large corporation or a tiny business, your data is valuable to both you and hackers. No, Never believe that your company is too little to be a target of an assault. According to a recent New York Times report, small and medium enterprises were the target of 60% of all cyber attacks in 2014. Over the last few years, the number has only Ryzen. Now, individuals in businesses at all levels are more vulnerable to ransomware and phishing scams as their popularity grows. Now, it is money for crooks and when crucial data isn't available, practically all enterprises come to a halt. So, you still don't believe there's anything to be concerned about. So you may not have data that is critical to your organizations on a daily basis, but you may have equipment no, that is underutilized or insure, insecure. Hackers can use your computer to launch attacks against larger businesses, making them virtually untraceable. So when this corporation trace the attacks, they will discover that your equipment is to blame, actually. So, as uh, our Deputy Privacy Commissioner Dundimapa mentioned, no, stated that data is more valuable than money. If someone takes your money, that's all they have. But if you let someone take your data, they may eventually take your money too. Okay? Then, if today's, no, where competitors can copy your products, Pirate your employers or employees and mirror your algorithms. Data is the only sustainable competitive advantage. Okay, so take note of it. Now, as what we have here in the Philippines, no, almost 42% of businesses question said they have been targeted by ransomware in 2020, up from 30% in 2019. So, data encryption was used in 76% of the cases, which means the hackers locked their databases until their demands were met. According to reports, the figure is higher than the global average of 54%. as what we have here. No? So, breaches in cases in the Philippines academic setting. So, it's just only for reporting and for discussions. No? So, According to github.com, no, and at the same time from Manila Bulletin, no, uh, UP Visayas website hack. No? Then hackers took over the University of the Philippines Visayas website on Thursday, that is June 11, leaving a note website breached by you know who. So the hackers added you're endangering the welfare of your students. May this message serve you as warning. Okay? Then Four Bicol University students hacked their school website in the name of mass promotion. So as you can see here, based on the statement now stated, of course, in, a, in their newspaper, that the homepage of the official website of Bicol University has been hacked by an anonymous group in relation of the uh, AO9 number 91 series of 2020 
No, the, the guidelines released on April 26, classes will resume on May 2 by a remote te teaching and learning or distance education strategies as the sem semester will end on the May 2020. Okay. Then at, at the same time, no, from ABS-CBN News, that is PUP and FAU Students Portal app. Then again, almost 30 Philippine schools have just this June. Ano? So cyber criminals have been hard, hard out at work in the past few months. It's not just small business and startups that are at risk. Schools are in just uh, as much risk also. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the list of different uh, state universities and colleges no? uh, in the Philippines no? hack this time of pandemic alone, okay? Now, when are we securing our own? So, as what we have here, no? uh, Arellano University, as you, see that is, uh, as you can see here, that is HTTP is, uh, HTTPS, the colon slash slash, or box slash box slash, Arellano, that edo that page. Now, HTTPS, stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure because we have S that is secure. Uh, it's a secure version of HTTP actually, no? which is the most common protocol for sending data between a web browser and a website. So to strengthen the security of data transport, HTTPS is encrypted. No? So HTTPS is, uh, is HTTP with encryption. So the, the difference between the two protocols is that HTTPS use TLS or SSL to encrypt normal HTTP requests and responses. As a result, HTTPS is far more secure than HTTP. So a website that uses HTTP has HTTP colon backslash backslash and its URL, while a website that uses HTTPS has HTTPS colon backslash backslash. Again, hypertext transfer protocol secure. As you can see here in uh, in Arellano University uh, website, they have already a secure website by using the hypertext transfer protocol secure. Now, uh, as you can see here, no, government agencies pull some on over data breach. No, so Commissioner Liboro affirmed that the National Privacy Commissions continue to focus on education sector as it makes at 17% of the breaches received in the first half of the year. And that is from privacy.gov.ph. No? So now, what is Data Privacy Act of 2012? No? So as you can see here, the National Privacy Commission mandates includes the following. So of course, ensure compliance with the provision of the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Uh, we are mandated to receive and resolve complaints. Of course, complaints from citizens and businesses alike and we're mandated to look for resolutions to these complaints. So we can initiate queries and call for investigation on matters affecting privacy. That is the National Privacy Commission's mandates. No? So the National Privacy Commission also has the power to issue cease and desist orders. So impose a temporary or permanent ban on the processing of personal information upon finding that the processing will be detrimental to the national security and public interest. So resolve the disputes between person and personal information controllers in an efficient and transparent manner using all the powers granted unto us as a quasi or quasi judicial and as the regulatory body. So the National Privacy Commission. They possess the general authority to compel any entity where, uh, with their government or any of its instrumentally to abide by its order or take action on matter affecting data privacy. So they promote a culture of a uh, culture protective of, to, uh, of the data privacy rights of persons. So they also provide guidance on the protection of data and data privacy to any party seeking uh, their assistance and of course, facilitate cross-border enforce, uh, enforcement of data privacy laws. <clears throat> Okay. So as you can see here, no, the main author of the 
Republic Act 10173 and the uh, National Privacy Commissioners. So, <clears throat> so how about the timeline no, of the data privacy law and other issuance? And that is passed to organization compliance. So the Data Privacy Act passed into law in 2012. So March 2016, National Privacy Commission Department was formed or agency, gov an, a government agency. Now, again, in 2016, August, no, implementing rules and regulations was published. The September 9, 2016 to 17, that is IRR came into effect and deadline for the data privacy uh, office registration that is for 12 months. Then March 2018, a deadline for registration of the DPS. Then uh, 2018 and June, this will be the deadline for security incident reports. No? So the registration requirements, all personal data processing system operating in the Philippines that involve personal data concerning at least 1,000 individuals or personal records must be registered with national privacy. So it means to say that, let's say, for example, in Arellano University, you have uh, more than 1,000 students, in, included, of course, the, the staff, you know, the faculty, the administration, and so on. So therefore, they are required you know, to, of course, to register the, uh, the Arellano University into the National Privacy Commission. Again, so if you have how many branches, so all uh, your branches are required not to register separately and with separate a data privacy officer at the same time. <clears throat> okay. Now, what is the key rule in the Data Privacy Act? Again, data subject. When we say the data subjects, you as a student is a data subject. So it refers to an individual whose sensitive personal or privileged information is processed personal. Okay, the personal information controller is the person who controls the processing of personal data or instructs, instructs another to process personal data on its behalf. Later on, I will give you an example of a data subject, a personal, uh, the PIC, the PIP, the DPO, and the National Privacy Commission. <laughs> now, when it comes to personal uh, information processor, organization or individual whom a personal information controller may outsource or instruct the processing of personal data pertaining to a data subject. So let's say, for example, no, uh, another agency, no, the outsource agency in your university. Data protection officer responsible for the overall management of compliance to data privacy. Because uh, Cesar Aliyan University has more than thousands in students and employees. So therefore, uh, the, as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, Aliyan University need to... Uh, appoint a person who will be a data protection officer and he or she, the one who is responsible to comply with data privacy for the uh, applications uh, at the same time or Data Privacy Act in the National Privacy Commission. Then the National Privacy Commission independent body mandated to administer and implement the DPA of 2012 and to monitor and ensure compliance of the country with international standards and set for personal data protection. So the key DPA actors, no? so the data subject, as I mentioned, an individual whose personal sensitive, uh, personal or privileged information is processed. So most commonly the students. No? And even the employee actually, no? then the privacy administration implementer of the act, so to monitor and ensure compliance of the country with international standards set for data protection. The key functions include rulemaking, advisory, public education, compliance, monitoring, investigation, and of course, uh, complaints and enforcement. Now, how about the PIC and PIP? So the personal information controller has a custody and controls the price of personal data of data subjects, contracts with data subjects. Then the personal information processor to whom persona information controllers outsource the processing of personal data of each data subject has no direct contract with the data subject. Now, so again, as I mentioned, you is the data subject. Then the regulator is the National Privacy Commission and the company or agency is the PIC and PIP. So Arian University is uh, under the company or agency, the PIC or the PIP. Okay, <clears throat> now, 
example of breaches and live cases. So I, I don't know if you've heard already about the COMELEC. No? So that all data uh, from the uh, COMELEC, no hack. Then the BPI, the consent form of the BPI, hospital and security storage record, student transferred by her parent without her knowledge. Because, uh, for example, if you are uh, below 18, 18 years old, yes, your parents has the right. But if you are 18 and above, it is uh, needed, of course, your consent. No? If your parents wanted to get your card, if your parents wanted to get your diploma, still the parents are required to ask your permission because you are 18 years and above. <clears throat> now, okay, so another thing is the clinical record of a student to disclose with her parents. No? It is not also allowable if you are 18 years and above. No, but with your permission, of course, pwede. Then, list of top students or passer. So, for, let's say, for example, you up, right after your graduation, you, so you are graduated, uh, for example, cum laude. Then the institutions posted your uh, uh, pictures in a tarpaulin sa front, for example, ng University of, uh, ng Ariane University, they are uh, required to ask your permission to do that. No? Let's say, for example, uh, there are somebody who are graduated uh, uh, pa oh, pa passing no? the, the licensure examination or the PRC. No? Let's say, for example, uh, accountancy. No? And the institutions wanted to post your names no? with your pictures at front of the university. They are still required to ask your permission. No? Then, no fast food delivery, disclosing personal information of clients. Because no, uh, sometimes, no, uh, especially during uh, the delivery, no, let's say, for example, if you want to uh, order and uh, ask them to deliver the products in uh, uh, sa bahay natin, no? so they are not also uh, required, they are not also allowed no, to disclose your personal information. Okay. No data sharing agreement between and among schools and universities. Now, let's say, for example, if the institution, for example, uh, the private companies, no, asking the all graduates of the university, Arellano University, no, they, they targeted to get the, 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 the list of graduates from Arellano University. Let's say, for example, a, a marketing firm. So they, they, uh, therefore, they need to have a data sharing agreements. No? Cedula in the malls, no, that's also not allowable right now. And security issues in buildings like logbook. Because but let's say, for example, uh, you visited, for example, your classmate in uh, other university. So upon, no, upon uh, entering in the buildings, no, in the institutions in other universities, you are required to log your information. That is not also acceptable right now for the data privacy concerns, okay? Profiling of customer from a mall. Customers from a mall, let's say, for example, okay, we'll give you ball pen, then uh, list your names, uh, your uh, contact number, your email, but, uh, was na nagta-type ka na ng data or na information, nakikita mo yung mga data or information ng mga sinundan mo. That is also a data privacy breaches. Okay? So take note of it, especially you are business ad student. The privacy notice. So as you can see at present, no majority of all forms no, na i-fill out natin, automatically may privacy notice. Another thing, use of USB or flash drive. Then personal laptop stolen. Let's say, for example, you are right after graduation, you are working in a, 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 a well-known company. Then nastol yung, ano, yung, yung laptop. Then andun lahat yung mga marketing ano, nyo, strategies, uh, even some uh, personal information or company information. No? Loss of CD in transit, of course. 
an error in viewing of student records in the online system. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, you are looking for a for your personal grades, but due to some errors, instead na yung personal grades mo makikita mo yung grades sa mga classmates mo, it is not allowable. L like before, no, uh, during our time when we are in college, no, uh, if we are asking our grades, no, sa so sabi lang ng prop, okay, come, uh, please come forward, then you could able to see the grades, no? Then, syempre, kung ako abante, nasa unahan, so walang problema. But I could able to see also the, the other grades. No, this time, it is not allowable. Okay? Use of recycled papers. Let, let's say, for example, there are certain cases, no? In one uh, school, no? In, in, in the province, no? That uh, most, most of the time, no? They are... Uh, using a the the yung parang uh, yung uh, papers na nagamit na natin uh, gagamitin ulit natin i-recycle natin for example for printing yung sa pack then right after that i-dispose natin yon then gagamitin for example babalutan ng mga tuyo and so on and so forth then yun pa lang nandoon ay record ng students yung transcript of record tapos may mga failed so nandoon yung pangalan niya nandoon yung information and so on that is also another example of breaches. No? Rappel stubs. No? Rappel stubs. Right after the rappel, it is potion paper. So, dapat sinisred yun. Shredded. No? <clears throat> then, universities and colleges, uh, website with weak authentication. So, as I mentioned, no? as much as possible, ang website po natin, it must be HTTPS. No? That uh, hypertext transfer secure. No? Protocol secure. Then, of course, personal records stolen from home of an employee. Because uh, especially right now, no, uh, we are in pandemic, so most commonly work from home. No? Then uh, all uh, company records no, uh, are available no, uh, online. No? So it is possible to stolen the personal records no? so from home of an employee. Photocopiers resolved without wiping the hard drives because at present, no, especially the latest photocopier machine, no, they could be able to save na yung mga data. Uh, then, ipoprovide na yung copies. No? Then, release of CCTV footage. So, at present, no, very, uh, uh, there, are, there are a lot of breaches no, when it comes to CCTV footage. Because, let's say, for example, you're looking for uh, there are certain complaint, no, specifically for example for the for this day. So therefore, the personnel reviewed, no, the CCTV, no, from uh, for example from, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Let's say for example, then possibly may makita tayo mga ibang uh, pangyayari within that ano within within that range. Na hindi naman yung intention mo na tingnan, ano. That is also a bridge. Hard drive sold online, of course. Especially uh, if you don't know how to um, reformat eight times. No? As much as possible, uh, even your cell phone. See to it that you will be able to reformat your hard drive, your cell phone, or your USB at least seven times. Para sigurado ka na nawala na talaga yung data or information. Password hack and reveal the first. Then unencrypted data. Now, so as what we have here, no? So, in the event of a data breach, no, we will not ask you how many millions you've spent in your hardware and IT expert. So, we will instead ask whether you've implemented National Privacy Commission's five data privacy guidelines. No? That is also from uh, Chairman Raymond. Ilivoro, the Privacy Commissioners, so the National Privacy Commission, uh, Commissioners. Okay? Then the scope of the Data Privacy Act. So the Data Privacy Act applies to the processing of all data of personal information and to any natural and juridical persons in the country and even abroad subject to certain qualification. That is under Section 4 of the Data Privacy Act. Okay, so again, classification of personal data, as I mentioned, no, personal information refers to any information whether recorded in a material form or not 
from which the identity of an individual is apparent or can be reasonably and directly ascertained by the entity holding the information or when put together with other information would directly and certainly identify an individual. So your, uh, your race, no? your, your religions, your age, your, your birthday, and so on and so forth. No? Now, so sensitive personal information. So it refers to the personal information about an individual, as I mentioned earlier. No? Your race, ethnic origin, marital status, age, color, religious, philosophical or political affiliations, health, education, genetics, sexual life, any proceeding for any offense committed or alleged to have been committed. Let's say, for example, previously you are... Uh, um, it's just only an example, no? Previously, you are uh, parang napagbintangan ka na may kasalanan. Then, na-expose na na yung iyong information, no? <clears throat> that is a sensitive information. So, all inclu also includes information issued by the government agency peculiar to an individual which include but not limited to the SSS, previous or current health records because it's important. For Let's say, for example, no? Uh, alam ko na alam nyo naman yung tama at mali, but, but, but for example... Previously, nagkaroon ka ng case about, nagkaroon ka ng health issues, no? Then, uh, syempre, na-open sa ibang tao yung dating sakit mo, no? Licenses or its denials, suspension or revocation and tax returns, no? And is specifically established by an executive order or an act of Congress to be kept classified. Now, this will be an example of personal information. Sensitive personal information and the privileged information. So as you can see here, based on the given example, no, as I as what I mentioned earlier, no, this will be an example of a personal information. Ang likot ng ano ni Doc, no. <clears throat> then for the sensitive inform personal information, so education, genetics, and so on and so forth. For the privileged information, example data received within the context of a protected relationship, attorney and client. So it is also under the Data Privacy Act privileged information. Now, additional uh, sensitive personal information, no, as I mentioned, website visited. I think you, since you are a business student, no, and especially you are now uh, take up your marketing subjects and you are very, very much familiar with digital marketing, no? especially the use of social media. Take note, once you visited, let's say, for example, you just simply type in, uh, let's say, for example, Facebook. No, You just uh, type, for example, uh, watches. No? watches. Then automatically, next time na mag-open ka ng Facebook account, automatic mag-display ang mga watches. Automatic. That is uh, due to, uh, as I mentioned, website uh, visited. So meron silang analytics. Nakikita nila yung kung ano yung uh, regular na binibisit natin. And so on. No? Personal data life cycle, so acquisition of data. Then right after is storage, then use, then transfer the data and the destruction. So this will be the key considerations when listing your personal information. <clears throat> no? uh, who is this data shared with internal and external? Who is authorized to access this data? Where do you keep your data? It is very important actually no? Na, that, that we need to consider. Okay, so... How long do you keep your data? Let's say, for example, uh, most commonly, especially kapag uh, school, uh, I think that is uh, depende kung ano ang nakalagay sa guidelines ng school ninyo. Na every five years ba sinistreded yung data? Kung student record, 20 years po ba or 50 years? So it depends upon to the data controller. No? So how do you dispose this data? Yung nga, as I mentioned, sinistread ba siya? Sinusunog ba siya? Pero ang pagsunog, bawal din kasi di ba yung ano naman. So that is an environmental issue naman. And so on. Now, data subject in academic setting. So of course, a student is a data subject. Teaching and non-teaching personnel like job order, contractual, provisionally, Provisionary and regular. So when we say teaching, your professor, uh, no. When we say non-teaching, includes uh, the registrar, no, the guidance counselor, the guard, actually, no, even the guard, the janitress, the janitor, and so on. E even they are a contractual, a provisionary, or a regular. That is their under non-teaching. The parents in your guardian is also a data subject in your in academic setting. 
applicant, of course, the student and the employee. Okay? Administrator, board of trustees, also a data subject. Visitors, guests, even through website or even walk-in. No? Contact person, like contractors, the OJT partners of the school, the suppliers of your, uh, for, let's say, for example, uniform, no? academic linkages. Let's say, for example, uh, exchange students in other country, no? industry partners, no uh, kung saan uh, doon tayo mag ojt no ina-assign kayo doon for ojt so the, the 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 industry partner of the Arellano University the consultant of course the exchange student and professors so it means to say that let's say for example may exchange student you are uh, you are the one who exchanges no uh, to korea for example then the korean students sila yung papasok sa Arellano University they are also data subjects. The research subjects or the respondents or the participants of the study is also a data subjects. And the community extension participants. No, uh, of course, Arellano University has a lot of community outreach or community extension participants. No? So they, they, they are also a data subjects in the academic settings. Now, the data controller responsibility. <clears throat> so they are the data controller you, you are a data controller if your company organizations, if you decide to collect the personal information of your customers, site visitors, and other targets, like registrars, no? the admission office. No? So what to collect? So uh, again, it is important, as I mentioned earlier, to have a data or the privacy notice no? to change or modify the data that you get. No? Let's say, for example, uh, the registrar's office uh, get these informations. Then the DSA, no, the, the student appears, no, get limited students, no, for the student information and so on and so forth. No, for employee, of course, the human resource department and so on. Then uh, again, the personal information controller, the university or the college, the professional organizations registered company, no, the process owner that is registrar, HR, and MIS head. <coughs> So for the PIP, the example, of course, like CHED, because uh, of course your uh, BSBA program is accredited by Commissioner of Education. No? Uh, but uh, of course, in Arellano University also as a DepEd program, they, they are required to uh, have a SSS, no? BIR, Pag-ibig, Bill Health for their employees, no accrediting and auditing agencies because uh, I do believe that Arellano University is a PACOCOA accredited and other accreditation body. The payroll bank depository, let's say, for example, yung salary ng uh, empleyado ng Arellano University through bank. Third-party academic service, no providers like traveling tours, no the, the learning management system, let's say, for example, your LMS is... Uh, uh, from third party, but I don't know exactly is Arellano kung own or developed by Arellano University yung inyong learning management system or outsource siya. Insurance companies and of course the Google in online platform. <coughs> rights of the data subject. So this will be your rights. No? So to be informed, right to object, you have the right to object. Let's say for example, as I mentioned earlier, no? uh, the university wanted to post your name since you passed, let's, let's say, for example, B, uh, CPA, then posted all your names in, in, the, in front of the university. So, pwede ka naman mag-object na hindi i-post. No? Uh, right to access, no? right to data portability, right to correct, no? right to erasure or blocking, right to file a complaint. You have the right to, to file a complaint. Let's say, for example, di mo pinayagan pero na-publish. Right to damages and transmissibility of rights. So, number one, the right to be informed. So, the data subject has a right to be informed whether personal data pertaining to him or her will be or being or were processed. So, the data subject should be notified and furnished with the following information before the entry of his or personal data into the processing system or to the next practical opportunity. No? Then, the right to object, no, as what we have here. <clears throat> No? So the data subjects has the right to object to the 
processing of his or personal data, including processing of direct marketing, as I mentioned earlier, no? automated processing or profiling, he or she should be given an opportunity to withhold consent in case of any amendment to the information supplied to the data subject under the right to be informed. Okay, the right to access. No? Uh, the data subject has the right to reasonable access to upon defining the following. So content uh, of his or her personal data that were processed and so on. The right to erasure or blocking. The right to damages. No? The transmissibility of the right of the subject and right to data portability. No, yung transferring of your data from one uh, department to another department. Now, again, an example of a potential breaches in security incident involving personal information naman. So bank, as I mentioned earlier, no, I, I'll, I'll already give you this example. So sa access control and security policies, personal records stolen from home of an employee security. So viewing of student records in public. So take note of it. Let's say, for example, no, uh, you are uh, you are the professor, no, or you are the, the faculty. Do not open the fa your laptop, no, in, in in Starbucks, no. Then somebody na nagdumadaan sa likod mo, pwedeng makita yung pangalan sa kayong grades ng students. Okay. Other violations data privacy act principles, no, no data sharing uh, agreement. So. Uh, let's say, for example, wala kayong pinarabang agreement na pwedeng ibigay ang inyong mga information. Nag-graduates kayo ng school doon sa isang company na nag-aay ng mga possible na makuha nila para magtrabaho sa company nila. No? <clears throat> Then, no, no data privacy notice. This is important actually. <clears throat> Then, <clears throat> take note of it. Potential penalties listed in the Data Privacy Act. Imagine an authorized processing, one to three uh, years or three to six years, 500,000 to 4 million ang fine. So, ang pinakamalaki talaga yung combination of acts. So, one to three years, 1 million to 5 million fine. So, Top 10 government um, first fines were 1999 to 2014. So as you can see here, no, rank fine entity. So from different uh, agencies and private job. Imagine laki ng mga ano nila. No? So let's say, for example, Apple, amount of fines and penalties 32.5 million. Kailan yun? 2014 sa US. Choice and consent ang problem nila. No? Uh, let's say, for example, uh, HSBC, 5 million, 2009, UK, security naman ng information and so on. So, so what data do we collect from our data subjects? <clears throat> Again, so criteria for local processing of PI, how social media influences purchase decision. So again, consent, contract with the individual, vital interest, life and health, legal obligations, National emergency, public order, and safety prescribed by law, constitutional or statutory mandate of the public authority, and legitimate interest of PIC or third party. <laughs> so, <clears throat> ito yung uh, sinasabi natin always, no? Do not collect if you cannot protect. Okay? So, personal data life cycle, it is already discussed a while ago. Now, the data privacy principles in the Philippines. No? Privacy, so the consent regime. So a data subject must be aware of the nature. Dapat alam nyo kung anong nature nung kinukuhan data. What will be the purpose and extent of the pricing of your personal data, including the risk and safeguards involved, the identity of personal information controller, his or her rights as the data subjects, and how this can be exercised. So any information and communications relating to the processing of personal data should be easy to access and understand using clear and plain language. So what will be the legitimate purpose? No? So the processing of information shall be compatible with a declared and specified purpose, which must not be contrary to law, morals, or public policy. So magbabasa rin tayo ng ano, privacy notice. Hindi lang tayo perma ng perma, ano? So we need to read and understand. 
no? The proportionality, the processing of information shall be adequate, relevant, suitable, necessary, and not excessive in relation to the declared as specified purpose. So personal data shall be processed only if the purpose of the processing could not reasonably be fulfilled by other means. So now, how about the online learning guidelines issued to help protect student privacy and reduce data breaches in school? Okay, so before webcam supported online discussions are recorded, a school must consider getting the consent of the parents or legal guardian of a student below 18 years old according to guidelines that a group of public and private universities in colleges across the country has issued. So, it means to say that opening webcam is not compulsory for the students. No? It is clearly stated on the online learning guidelines issued to help protect student privacy and reduce data breaches in schools. <clears throat> okay? Now, the presence of the parents or guardian during this recorded session must also be considered, said the group, which likewise advised that the use of webcam in synchronous online classes be optional. Nako, sabi ni ma'am na nakikinig ngayon, patay, nire-required ko pa naman yung student ko na naka-open yung camera. Now, these are among the guidelines contained in Advisory Number 2020-5 that the Data Privacy Council education sector issued recently to help students, parents and teachers, administrators and other school personnel safely not navigate digital spaces as classes have shifted to an online programs, uh, platforms to curb the spread of the COVID-19. So with encouragement from the National Privacy Commission, data protection officers of a number of universities and colleges volunteered on June 26 to come up with the guidelines in the wake of a surge in security breaches of data system of schools in the country in the first half of the year. So it means to say, uh, this uh, guidelines or advisory number 2020-1 was created by the data protection officers of different universities in cal and colleges. So, the security breaches is deemed from a hack portals and databases, phishing, stalling, laptops, system glitches, and human error, according to a report of the National Privacy Data Security and Compliance Office. <clears throat> so now, protect students' privacy. Now, Privacy Commission's Raymond uh, Iliburo said that the National Privacy commends the education sector for coming up with an online learning guidelines with data privacy at its core. So adapting technologies and online tool is a new progression of education as the pandemic continues to inhibit the data privacy or the National Privacy Commission movements. Like everything else, online learning must adhere to the data privacy law for the safekeeping of personal data. So educational institutions must choose an online learning platform with the best security features and one that is most capable of protecting students' privacy. Consider if the platform meets the requirements of the Data Privacy Act before letting students use them. So. For the conduct of a personal data privacy activities deemed necessary or related to an online learning, the advisor emphasized accountability, information about education as sensitive personal information, legitimate interest, legitimate purpose, and proportionality and transparency. The area of concern, so the guidance listed areas of concern covered by the guidance, these are the use of a learning management system or the LMS and online productivity platforms. Other available and official supporting tools for online learning, use of social media. Again, sorry to say, no, majority, even I, no, 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 guilty ako. Uh, your teachers or professor create an FB group, no, if be chat messenger, messenger no. Use of social media publication of information of files via the means of platforms, storage or personal data, use of webcams and recording of videos of online classes, online proctoring, and data security. So the advisory, among other things, said that an announcement or posting involving personal data such as grades, 
a result of assignment must be viewable only by its intended recipients. <laughs> Another, downloading of personal data stored in the LMS should be kept to a minimum and or limited to that which is necessary for online learning. Except, meron nga po tayong privacy notice or na inform na na inform kayo na okay this a lesson is uh, recorded and posted in my YouTube account so for the entire semester yung pwede yon pero sabi okay so this video recorded was posted in YouTube until the end of time no or walang ibinigay na deadline so dapat inform kayo at pumayag kayo with consent Okay, so most commonly, sabihin ng teachers, okay, our class is recorded, so if you have some data privacy issues or concern, you are allowed naman to turn off your video camera or video ka, your, cam, your video cam. Okay, meron naman ganon. <clears throat> May mga professor, dapat na dapat talaga sinasabi yon. Okay, another thing, uh, mechanism must be in place so that submissions such as assignments and projects may be carried out in a safe and secure manner. No? That's why yun nga, ikinukusider yung learning management system. Submission via social media platforms are discouraged. Take note of it. No? Posting or sharing of personal data such as photos and videos on social media must have a legitimate purpose and be done using authorized social media accounts of the school. <laughs> Explicit consent of the students, no? Or of course, kung below 18, parents or legal guardian, in the case of minors, of course, should be obtained before the conduct of online proctoring and the use of related tools or technologies. No? The advisory are also asked to practice limited use of supporting tools or technologies that they have not officially adapted as there is no normal relationship between them and the developer of the tools. Kasi, di ba? The school prerogative. <clears throat> Of course, siyempre, meron ang prerogative ng school. The guidance is meant to be a set of recommendations and shall not be treated as some type of policy since schools retain the prerogative to de decide on the measures they deem appropriate. Okay. So, the advisory also said that the document covered different areas relevant to an online learning, but it was not intended to be an exhausted list of such concerns. So neither does it include issues which, while related to online learning, do not involve the processing of personal data. No? So the advisory can be updated periodically as the need arises. It added by the National Privacy Commission. So the advisory is among the articles in the September issue of the Data Privacy Journal. So a complete copy of the advisory can also be read at the National Privacy Commission website. <clears throat> so, areas of concern, as what I mentioned, no? these are the use of learning management system. Okay? So, use of social media, publication of information or files by other means or platforms. Okay? Now, the advisory among other things said that an announcement or posting involving personal data such as grades and result of assignment must be viewable only by its intended recipient. Take note of it. Submission via social media platforms are discouraged again. And so on. Now, this will be the related laws, regulations, guidelines, circular, and memoranda. So it means to say that the National Privacy Act so during na kinakraft nila, uh, this will be the another considerations. No? So for photo and video, RA995. For security, that is ISO, IAC 27001 and 002. The ICT Circular 007. Blurring of face, that is Philippine Constitution right to privacy. For disposal of data, as I mentioned, is shredded ba siya, i-dispose ba siya, and so on, that is RA9470. Disposal of electronic equipment, no, that is DAO 92-29, hazardous waste uh, management by BNR. Okay? Then transmittal of data, that is RA 87-92. So I think you need to be familiar with this one because you took up uh, BS in Business Administration or BA. 
Okay, so transmittal of data is important. That is an e-commerce act of 2000. So National Privacy Initiative Code of Conduct to guide school amid shift to online education. That is also available in the privacy.gov.ph website. Okay, as such, the following are the recommendations of the commission. So, yun, create data breach response team. Create policies and implement them effectively to prevent or minimize breaches and ensure timely discovery of security incident. Of course, uh, conduct security audits and tests. No? Proactively explore and adapt measures that can help prevent intrusions. Okay, so the data center, of course, personal data being processed by a government agency shall be stored in a data center which may or may not be owned and controlled by such agency. No? So all personal data that are digitally processed must be encrypted. So talagang dapat secure, no? With their arrest or in transit. No? So password or pass uh, pass phrases used to access personal data should be of sufficient strength to deter password attacks. So as much as possible, combination ang password, text, special characters, no? uh, numbers, no? and so on. So at least eight characters in above ang password. So how about you guys? How many characters yung inyong password? Especially for... Uh, your LMS account and others. No, Facebook account, your social media account. So this will be the national privacy five pillars of compliance. No? The data privacy, the PIA, PMP, PDP, and the BRD. So the five pillars of the data privacy accountability and compliance. So number one requirements of the school, appoint a data privacy officer, conduct a privacy impact assessment. So have a privacy management program and codify it into a privacy manual. So all universities and colleges, they are required to provide a privacy manual. So implement data privacy and protection measures, exercise breach reporting procedures. So let's say, for example, may cases na nag-complain nag no, na estudyante or even a uh, professor or even yung staff, no, automatically dapat and re-report agad yan sa National Privacy Commission. There are certain uh, days no, na dapat na-report niya agad. <clears throat> or else, penalty. Okay, so I think that's it uh, for uh, today. Once again, thank you for inviting me. By the way, I am also a certified data privacy officer level 2. No? So, thank you and uh, good day everyone. Keep safe always.